तो दोनों चीज़ हो सकती है सो फर्स्ट थिंग इज़ दैट लॉर ऑफ वायरल इन्फेक्शन कैन एक्चुअली प्रेजेंट लाइक ग्लूकस मोस्ट इम्पॉर्टेंटली पार्वो वायरस पी नाइनटीन कैन एक्चुअली प्रेजेंट एग्जैक्टली द सेम एज ग्लूकस दे कैन हैव द सेम रैश इवन इफ यू डू द ब्लड टेस्ट देर ए एन ए विल कम बैक पॉजिटिव बट एंड देर दे हैव लाइक प्लेटलेट काउंट इज लो हीमोग्लोबिन इज लो थिंग्स लाइक दैट बट पार्वो वायरस यूजली गोज अवे विद इन फोर वीक्स थ्री टू फोर वीक्स राइट एंड देन यू विल एस्क दैन द हिस्ट्री देर मे बी अंग चाइल्ड एट होम Uh, or they work in in a nursery or a school or something like that and they get exposed uh, but the second point is that a lot of patients can have an underlying lupus so so the thinking about lupus is that patients usually have some kind of a generic predisposition to get lupus and then something else happen in their life in what it could be it could be like a viral infection it could be some chemical exposure it could be anything that triggers the immune system and in the susceptible host which has the genetic makeup something else happens and that uh, triggers the immune system to sh- unmask lupus uh, but the thing is that uh, if what symptoms are only for 5 days uh, one is that you have to ask them so they may be telling if you ask them more in detail they may say oh i've not been feeling well for few months and i was just having body aches or i feeling a lot of them they will just say i was just feeling fatigued and tired but they just keep thinking that maybe i'm just working too much or i'm stressed out or something and again you have to think that they are young women so they have lot of body reserve they you know they have young body so they can handle lot of things so they just keep on saying oh you know i was just tired or just fatigue but you as dig in deeper then they can tell you that it's been going for but if its symptoms are only for 5 days and nothing else has happened then i would not diagnose that patient with lupus i will wait and then see how which way the symptoms are going and then because again the thing is that you don't want to miss the diagnosis but you don't want to over diagnose also so the skin biopsy skin biopsy is good um there is a specific findings on the skin biopsy that you see um but again you know it's an invasive procedure um and there is special immune staining that you have to do for so those are things i don't think that are that easily available and if the skin rashes on the face you don't want to biopsy somebody's face so that's why you know we try not to do as much biopsy even though the findings are very typical if you see there is something called the band test so at the dermal epidermal junction uh, the uh, the immune complexes get deposited there and when you do the immunofluorescence and look under the microscope you can see that this band where the dermis and the epidermis um, you know they come together and and that is very typical for patients with lupus so what are the things which are overlapping with rheumatoid Yes, so overlapping is joint uh, but uh, the thing with uh, rheumatoid is that the joint actually get destroyed with rheumatoid because there is uh, destruction where the synovium attaches to the joint in lupus the joint does not get destroyed is mostly the tendinopathy and then the hands can look exactly the same but uh, the arthritis findish, fi- uh, findings in lupus called jacquard's arthritis and jacquard's arthritis is that you can correct the abnormality so if you see the deformity and you try to correct them it can be correctable in rheumatoid arthritis when you're seeing the sawn neck deformity or you see the deformity that cannot be corrected um the other thing that can overlap is of course you know a lot of blood test can overlap um and then um, the findings of like fatigue fever all of those things can overlap uh, and some patients can have a, actually a mixture of lupus and rheumatoid it's called rupus r h u p s rupus So rupus is actually a known entity where they have some features of rheumatoid arthritis and some features of lupus and you cannot make one diagnosis because you have to understand that the basic pathophysiology is that there is a dysregulation of the immune system so immune system which is supposed to only fight the bacteria or the virus is now and uh, protect your own body is now dysregulated and now it is starting to attack your own body so the proteins so so that is the underlying pathophysiology in the very basic terms with ra for sle for sjogren syndrome for psoriatic arthritis that is the number one pathology right uh, so they can overlap and then uh, you know patients and diseases don't read textbook we read textbook so that we can approach things in systemic way but when you're seeing a patient you have to use your clinical judgment and if you understand what is the underlying process going on 
then your clinical judgment is more sophisticated. If you don't understand the underlying process that well, then it be, your clinical judgment is not as good, right? So that's why it's important to have educational sessions and kind of understand more deeply about the disease process. Okay, so that. <laughs> So treatment, so of course, you know, um, the one treatment which everybody with lupus should have is hydroxychloroquine. So HCQ is like the treatment that each and every patient who has lupus must be on HCQ unless there is some contraindication. Uh, and when you put somebody in HCQ, the one thing that you have to do is to make sure that you the um, retinal examination because it, it starts to uh, affect your vision. Um, but the incidence is very low, so it's like 1 in 10,000 patients after being on 10 years of, right, HCQ. Then, so that's why, uh, but the thing is that HCQ is the number one. In the initial phase, we give pre pre a lot of steroids also, prednisone, uh, but try to minimize it. But a lot of patients need a low dose 5 milligram prednisone, so we do that. But then, huh? Isolier, prednisone. At least. At least. But initially to control the disease we have to give higher doses. And then depending on if their kidneys are involved, then you have to give more stronger immunosuppressors like mycophenolate mofetiel. Sometimes you give cyclophosphamide, sometimes there's a thiopren, um, and then some biologics. So there's a lot of other treatment modalities, methotrexate, if the joints are involved a lot, we give methotrexate. So so those are the things that you have to think about. But the treatment it there is not a good treatment available for lupus, but HCQ or hydroxychloroquine or placanol, that is one thing that everybody should be on it. That's one thing that has shown to be absolutely beneficial for patients with lupus. Yeah.